All right. You won't believe what happened to us. We got robbed. I'm so angry in humanity these days. I'm so angry that people can just go steal from somebody so they have some money for the day when there's hardworking people like us out there getting robbed every single day because these low life losers are out there robbing people, standing on the corners with signs, begging for money and then jumping in Mercedes Benz and going to the next place and robbing them for thousands of dollars. I'm pissed. Hello everybody, welcome back to Paragon Ridge Ranch. Chrissy here and Jeremy. And we are here to tell you that we got robbed last week. Well, we've been in business about what? Four months? Four? Yeah. Or three? Four. Four, okay. We've been in business about four months. Uh, we try to be pretty careful, but I'm pretty open and trusting of people. When I get, get to talking to them, I fall in love with people and I want to share everything with them. And he says I kind of talk too much, but Jeremy's always aware and he's always around. Um, most of the time he has his pew pew with him. And we were getting ready for the farmer's market on Friday and Jeremy was out taking the measuring tape and he was giving them like, what were you doing? You were doing 12 foot pieces. The boys and I were out there marking the spots for people to park. Kristen and I were measuring, painting. Parker was going back with the little, little orange flags, putting them out for us. And then a car came in. It was like a Honda Passport and it pulled in really slowly. What was it? Like a, a Honda pilot. 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 I thought or it was a passport. Like a passport pilot, something. So it pulled in like this towards the front of the store, and then it had an older like Mercedes SUV, about the same size, dark, pulled behind it, and waited for them to park. And they parked over by the mulch. Where we weren't going to really be able to identify them or see them, which. Obviously, now that we know, that was the point. The other car pulled in slowly behind them just to check things out and then turned around and left. So, they took a minute to get out of their car. They all put on their little hospital masks, you know, little blue masks, and um, they came in. So, two younger ladies, probably in their 20s, came in. And Grabbed a basket, walked over, grabbed a Red Bull. They were not speaking English. I had no idea what they were saying. Um, and then I was standing behind the counter and no one was back here because we, um, it was towards the end of the day and we were doing stuff outside. I was manning the front counter. And so they came in and they started talking to me in their foreign language and I didn't understand what they were saying. And they said a word that sounded like chicken. And I said, oh yes, we have chickens. And at about that time, the other girl goes, oh look, and she goes over to like this little silk satin purse that we have and she's like oh this is so pretty which one do you like and then the other one went over there so they distracted me to look towards away from the opening right here um, this is the opening from the front door that comes to the back so I said, oh, I have that one. It's so pretty. You know, you're going to like them. They're little coin purses. You could put tampons in them or lipstick or, or whatever. And then she said something chicken again. I was like, yeah, let me go show you. Well, I have baby chicks, you know? Well, right before that, a lady that had like a little crop top and like a long flowy skirt. She looked like a gypsy. Hi, very good. She came in and she started walking to the back. I didn't really pay attention. I know that it was like their parents is what they look like. And then a man came in and the man had like a hat with like a skull shirt with roses. And he had just put on like this long black sweatshirt. Well, 
I said, here, let me go show you the chickens back here. And she's like, no, no, no. And she grabbed a magazine I had sitting there and she sat it down and she's like, these chickens here. And I said, no, that's my personal chicken book that I read. I said, I don't have those chickens. I said, I've got chickens back here I can show you. She's like, no, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna read this magazine until I'm done and then you can show me your chickens. Well, she said that pretty clearly after not speaking English. Um, and then the other girl kind of swarmed up. And about that time, it was like 20 or 30 seconds that I was trying to, trying to be thoughtful and nice to him, but I thought, this is really weird. I felt like they were touching too many things. I felt like they, I told you, I felt like they were came in here and like they were poisoning us. Like they were putting poison all over to hurt us or something like that. That's, that's a, what my heart felt. Anyway, so then the lady and the man came back up and he started like yelling at the younger girl because she had like a Red Bull. And so she ran over and she grabbed three more and put them on the counter and he pulls out this wad of money and he just goes like this. And he goes through all this money. <laughs> And he throws down two fives and he walks out and the lady walks out. Well then the one lady said to the other one, put that put that Red Bull back. We don't need that many, just get three. Yeah, three, three. So they paid for three. They walked out like they didn't even want their change, but I went ahead and I gave them their change and they walked out. Well, I grabbed the cordless phone for the shop because I was walking outside in case a customer called. And I walked out behind him and Parker's like, Mom, that's really weird. He's like, did you see how much money he had? I said, yeah, I know, honey, but you know, some people carry around a lot of money. So was Parker in here when he paid? Yes. So Parker had came in. Parker had came in. Um, and, and followed me out. He walked out with me or right at that point. And I had came in as they were walking out. The parents had already walked out, I guess, but I followed them out because I came in the side door and I followed the two girls out, but I really wasn't paying attention to them or anything. And then, because I was going back out to count spots and everything. Um, but so yeah, go we ahead. walked out behind him. Yeah, we, we walked out, out behind, behind him. When I and said, thank Jeremy, you, thank yeah. you. And Jeremy thank was you. looking at him and he said that the man just kept staring at him really weird. No, so. it wasn't the man. It was one of the girls as she was walking to the car. She kept looking back at me and kind of made a wide turn. I was like, this is it's weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So then Press or Parker's like, Mom, that was weird. I was like, yeah, I feel like they were like putting poison all over because they were touching and talking and very just too much things going on all at once like being abrupt and just moving around and trying to tell me what to do anyways um so we walked out to the car they got in the car i said jeremy that was really weird but so at closing time i closed out the cash register and everything and went back to my office to get my bag what's it called office right there I Bill, carry a binder like deal. Like a leather portfolio. That zips it... up and has her checkbooks in it and has the the money for the closeouts every evening. So when I can go to the bank, I have it here with me. I take it back and forth so I can make deposits. So long story short, I go in there and go to my drawer and I noticed the bottom drawer was open a couple of inches. And so I've closed it and opened up the drawer that I was getting into and I noticed my binder was unzipped. Opened it up, the money bag was gone. So, and then the zipper in there that keeps the checkbooks was open and the checkbooks were all messed up and everything. So I was like, did somebody get in here and get the money bag? And I was like, like, what no. do you mean the money bag? The money's still in the cash register. We haven't done the batch yet. And he's like, no, the actual, all the deposits for the whole week. Yeah, so they're like, no, ask the boys, and no, 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 and then it dawned on me, I, somebody came back here, and then the first person, unfortunately, I thought of was them, so we immediately went to the cameras. We were scrambling. We, we couldn't even get our phones to work because we were just like, where's the money? Where's the bag? So I was trying to pull my phone up, and he's trying to pull his phone up, and we're both doing that together, and we couldn't rewind, and we couldn't fast forward, and we were getting frustrated because... Our hearts were like in our throat, you know? Yeah. So you got it pulled up. So we got it pulled up and I re rewind, rewound.
All right, we had to take a pause for the video. The actual police department is here right now retrieving some of the video footage to put on a jump drive for the report. So they're going through the video cameras right now and we will finish our story in a few as soon as they're getting their information from us. So we'll be right back. We got the cameras pulled up and I went back on the footage of them being here and sure enough, the two girls was up front with Chrissy talking to her. The other female, which was the older one, mother, I don't know, came in, walked straight by, went straight to the back, to that door right, th right there. They're like a week old baby kids. And proceeded to walk, open the door, walked in. And then once she got in there, the guy came walking through and followed the same footsteps, went right in. And they were in there for like, I need to look 20 something to 30 seconds. And then, uh, then they just came out like normal. to the front. This is like the street, but there is an act under the heat lamp. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get a time. Do you remember the front of the family? And did they like it? The girls up front with Chrissy was checking out some Red Bulls that they had had up there. And I guess the guy pulled out a wad of cash. Ours, I don't know. And flipped out some money and paid for it and then walked out to the vehicle. And I grabbed my phone like for the shop to go outside after him because we, you know, in case we get a customer call or whatever. So I walked out after him and Parker had seen him flipping that money and he was like, mom, that was so weird. You see all that money? And I was like, yeah. And I might've said this already, but I went outside and I got Jeremy and I said, I feel like they were like putting poison all over a place so that we could be poisoned. Like, I feel like they're, they're touching their, they've got commotion going on. They're touching everything. They're talking fast. They're talking another language. Like they're really like overwhelming. And I feel really weird. And then Parker said that they made him feel really weird. And Jeremy's like, well, we're right off the highway. There's going to be people traveling to Texas here. So there's going to be people that aren't from around here going back and forth. And, and that was it. Um, so the one girl, when she walked out, she was staring at Jeremy and Jeremy was staring at them. And then um, and I was just walking out behind him, and she just kept looking at me. We were taking a wide turn to go to her vehicle. And I was like, this is kind of weird, but I didn't think they did what they did. But. And so, of course, they had paper tags because I did notice when they backed up, I just kind of glanced at the vehicle, you know, and it had a paper tag flapping. Uh, and they left and they went south on the highway out here. Um, we immediately called the police um, while Jeremy was trying to get like screenshots and, and screen videos of what had happened. The police came pretty quickly. Um, we talked about what happened. We showed him the whole video. Um, he said, put it out on Facebook because you will find these people with the community faster than we will. Have everybody spread the word, help them uh, identify them. They're gonna see them, they're gonna get caught faster than we can. So we did, we went out to like all the local pages everywhere probably like within a 20 mile radius of here and we started blasting it and as soon as we did we started getting messages from people all over what were they saying they seen them at this walmart holding a sign asking for money and seen them at this quick trip all the way from glenpool to henrietta right. doing this stuff and then we got um, a call from a friend that saw them in Owasso. 
I mean, these are people saying that they saw him that day with those same clothes on, the same identification, the same vehicle, and they still weren't caught. So they were out driving around stealing from people. So long story short, that's how our weekend was after such a wonderful weekend last week. Going to shoot dang, hanging out with Sid and Frankie, going to shoot dang ranch, seeing all our friends turn to a complete crap shoot on Friday. And then we had the farmer's market Saturday and that you know was wonderful. There wasn't as many people, but it's because we have such tremendous flooding in this area. People are still trapped by their homes. They have no water, they have no roads that they can get out. So it's just been a really rough weekend. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a wonderful Mother's Day. I had a great Mother's Day, but I just can't. Today's been bad. Like I've been crying, I've been upset all day. Um, customers are so wonderful. They're coming in and asking us how it's going. They're out looking for these bad people for us. Um, they're giving us suggestions. They're sharing our Facebook posts, which is like so helpful. The community outreach is amazing, but it still hurts your feelings. It still makes you feel like, I told somebody it's like they're insulting my integrity. They're insulting how much hard work we put into this place and everything that we're doing to be amongst these people that we love in our community, to have just somebody come in here and do that to you. It feels like it's just the intrusion. It's the intrusion, but still, I'm just so glad that Parker and Preston were not back there, that they were outside. But I know that the, the feeling's gonna go away in a few days or in a few months, I'll feel better, but it's still, it's still stressful. When people walk in, I don't know if I should stay at the front or help them in the back here by the products. I'm yelling for Jeremy, where are you? If he's outside helping somebody, I can't leave the front now. Like. These are things I didn't think of before because I was so trusting in people. It just, it just sucks. It sucks. The world sucks. People wearing masks now. Yeah. Yeah. If it makes you, I don't know, like say, take that mask off so we can see your face, you know? Um, and I spoke to a reserve officer and he was saying something about that, that, uh, Unless you have an elderly person or something like that wearing a mask, you have the right to ask them to remove it. And you have a right to refuse service. But being a new business, you don't want to push those buttons. But I think I we're going to be aware. Be aware. And then we legally can say, hi, I understand you want to wear a mask. But because of theft and robbery, we would like you to please remove your mask for a second and smile at the camera so you can get your full face. And then, of course, you put it back on. And... They might get their feelings hurt, but not as bad as my feelings are hurt right now with all this happening. I mean, if they would be an understanding, kind person, then they'll get it. Um, I would never want to expose them. But this whole mask thing is ridiculous. People are using it against us now, and I'm done with it. I'm going to always be worried about somebody with a mask coming through the doors. Also, yeah. the police suggested that we can actually put a sign up that says that we encourage open carry here at our store. I personally encourage it and so does Jeremy and we will stand behind that right that we have and I will encourage it and I think I'm gonna put up a sign I think I'm gonna get a nice sign made that we encourage it um, please bring your open carry into this into this store because we honor our freedoms and our liberty and we might need your help one day and right back to you we might be able to help you one day so but there are several customers that come in here that have a big old pew, pew. on their hip um, I see that a lot actually yeah. so yeah <laughs> I know, Plus, it scares we're kind some of people. out in the country anyway, so. We are. Uh, so the law isn't very close. It takes quite some time if there's a wreck or, or something going on that you need to get here. The police came very quickly the other day. They got here very quickly after we found out that we were robbed. Um, it's gone smooth with them. They've been so helpful. They've followed up. They've called us back. We're able to text them. They've come in and, and they've gotten some of the footage. Um, they've got pictures. They're working with like analysts trying to get better better screenshot pictures. They're talking to other precincts trying to trying to help us. So they have been amazing. Um, it still doesn't feel good. It still hurts. It's still overwhelming. It's kind of like a post-traumatic stress really. Like when people are coming in or people are talking to you and you have to like move around and, there's nothing here to steal you guys. There's nothing here, but now it's just the invasion on my privacy and on my things and the protection mode that I have all the time. I have it at home too. I like to just be at home, have no cars driving by, no people coming over, just be safe and keep my stuff protected. And it just rips that out. It just rips it out. But we want to share this with you and some footage to show you what's going on and just to tell you, be aware. I was too comfortable. I was distracted. Um, it wasn't our fault in any way that this happened. It was horrible criminal people, but we just want, I don't know what to say. I guess it could be our fault for trusting people yeah. and not yeah. 
watching them every step they go and yeah. you know but i enjoy my conversations i enjoy my people i enjoy talking about chickens and dogs and ducks and donkeys and sheep and land. it's just everything i enjoy it i enjoy it so much so now i just got to be more aware and not let my guard down and we need to get walkie-talkies so we know where each other are at all times. Um, you know, I can't go outside and load feed if he's in the feed room, or I can't come back here and get somebody chickens, which we're on the, the ban for chickens right now, um, and leave the front open because there's bad people out there, guys. We want you to be aware there's bad people and do not let your guard down. It's horrible. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that it helps you somewhere just to maybe Remember that we let our guards down a little bit too much sometimes when we're comfortable just to always be aware and number one, make sure that your family is protected. I, again, am so grateful that Preston Parker were outside with Jeremy taking care of stuff for the farmer's market. I don't know what would have happened if they were in here. I don't know what would happen if they were in the back room when those people approached them. We don't know if they were armed. We'll never know, but it does not feel good. My heart has been in my throat for days, but I just keep grabbing part. I keep grabbing Preston and Parker and just kissing them and loving on them and telling them that I'm so grateful that they're okay. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys have a great night. Bye-bye.